2, verse 16. Read that. Galatians chapter 2, verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the, by the faith of Jesus Christ, Yahushua, even who we have believed in Yahushua, that we might be justified by the faith of Yahushua and not by the works of the law. <laughs> Go ahead. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Read that last part again. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Let me tell you what that does not mean. That does not mean <laughs> that we ain't got to keep the commandments. For all you Christians out there and you Christian-minded Israelites, that does not mean that we don't have to keep the law. And I'm going to prove it. <laughs> Ecclesiastes chapter 32, verse 17. But let me tell you what it does mean. This is what it means. Read that. A sinful man will not be reproved. A sinful man, a man full of sin, will not be corrected. Read on. But find an excuse. So I'm not going to listen to what Christ said. Yeah, I was shot. I'm not going to listen to that. I'm not going to listen to what the rest of the Bible says. I'm going to try to find a loophole. He will find an excuse. Read on. According to his will. A sinful man will find an excuse according to whatever it is he want to do. He's going to go in the Bible and try to find a scripture that gives him the loophole to do evil. Galatians 2.16. If you're using it to teach people and say it, that means you don't have to keep the law. You are a sinful, evil man or woman. And I'm going to prove it. that I told you I was going to be doing called stumbling blocks. Once again, there are certain scriptures in the Bible that are stumbling blocks to our people, meaning when they read those scriptures, for some reason, their mind goes completely blank. They forget everything else that they've read before or prior to that scripture, and they come to a brand new conclusion. Now, last time, people read a scripture in Galatians, the first chapter, and assumed Paul was set up to teach all nations. So we went in the scriptures and followed the precepts and found out that that was talking about Israelites. In today's session, we're going to read the book of Galatians chapter 2 verse 16. Galatians 2 16 is a stumbling block that is used by the Christian church as a whole and Christian minded Israelites in particular. They try to use that scripture to say we don't have to keep the commandments. If you are teaching that, you are out of order. Why are you out of order? Because Yahweh Shah, Jesus Christ, is our head. Get Matthew 5, 17. What did Yahweh Shah say 
concerning the law. Let's establish what our head, our leader, Jesus Christ, who the world does not understand. His name is Yahweh Shah. Let's see what he said concerning the law. Read that. Think not that I come to destroy the law. So Yahweh Shah, Jesus Christ said, don't even think that I came to destroy the law. So when you read Galatians 2.16, you are not supposed to think that Christ did away with the law. Christ never did away with the law. Read on. Or the prophets. And Christ didn't do away with anything that the prophets said. That's why Isaiah 55 verse 8, when most of his word does not return to him void. Christ didn't come to do away with any of that stuff. Read on. I am not come to destroy. And Christ didn't come to destroy the law. Read on. But to fulfill. But Christ came to fulfill. Uh-oh. So a Christian is saying, see, Christ fulfilled the law. Mm. We ain't got to keep the law. <laughs> Give me Acts 3.18. We'll let Acts chapter 3 verse 18. When Christ said he came to fulfill, what did Christ come to fulfill? I'm going to tell you. Christ came to fulfill all the prophecies in the Old Testament that were written about him. That's what that means. Read that. Acts 3.18. But those things which God before has showed by the mouth of all his prophets. I'm on. That Christ, Yahweh should suffer, uh -huh. he hath so fulfilled. Have what? So fulfilled. Have what? So fulfilled. So Christ fulfilled all the things that he was that was spoken about in the Old Testament that he would suffer. Christ fulfilled those things. That's what it's talking about. Go back to Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, and read that again. Think not that I come to destroy the law. So Christ said, don't even think that I came to destroy the law. Read on. Or the prophets. So Christ didn't come to destroy what the prophets established either, because all of it lines up. Read on. I am come not to destroy, but to fulfill. Christ didn't come to destroy the law, but Christ came to fulfill the law. He came to fulfill the things that were written about him in the Old Testament, about him coming. He came to be a sacrifice for the nation of Israel because the Most High required a blood sacrifice. That's also in the Old Testament. So Christ came to fulfill that and the prophecies that spoke about how he would live, what he would do, how he would die, and all that. Christ came to fulfill those things, not the rest of the law. Read on. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass. And heaven and earth is still here. The Bible says, till heaven and earth pass, read on. One jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the Lord. One jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the Lord, read on. Till all be fulfilled. Till all be fulfilled, read on. What, whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments. So whosoever therefore, whoever it is in existence that will break the very smallest commandment, read on. And shall teach men so, so you Christians and you Christian-minded Israelites, you say that Paul was teaching, we don't have to keep the law. What does the scripture say? What did our leader, Yahweh Shah, say? Read that again. What's whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments. Whosoever, including Paul, shall break one of the least commandments. Read on. And shall teach men so. And go around teaching people that they ain't have to keep teach, they ain't have to keep the law like the Christians say Paul was doing. Read on. He shall be called the least. He shall be what? Called the least. So according to your doctrine, Paul is supposed to be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Because you say he was going around teaching that we ain't got to keep the law. And that's a bold-faced lie. It's you. The problem is with the reader. You don't understand what Paul was saying. That's what we're going to show you today. Read on. He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. That man is going to be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever's teaching that. Read on. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great. And whosoever shall do the commandments to the best of their ability, and teach people to keep the commandments to the best of their ability, that man or that woman shall be called great, read on, in the kingdom of heaven. They're going to have a great position in the kingdom of heaven. If Paul was teaching that you ain't got to keep the commandments, Paul would not have a great position in the kingdom of heaven. So somebody's lying. Either Paul is lying or you're lying. From there, read Matthew chapter 19. We're going to start from... Uh, I believe I want to start from verse 6. But let me get it and see. Matthew chapter 19. Um, we can, uh, let's see. Go to, um, Verse 16 is what I want. Matthew 19 and 16. Read. Come. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So we always read in the New Testament about good things. What is good? What does it mean to do good? Read on. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? So Christ said, Why are you calling me good? Go ahead. There is none good but one, that is Yahweh. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep 
the commandments. So if you will enter into life, keep the commandments. That's the same thing we just read in Matthew 5, verse 19. Whosoever shall do and keep the commandments, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Now we're reading here, Yahweh Shai is saying, if thou will enter into life, what is life? Eternal life is talking about the kingdom of heaven. You have to keep the commandments. That's how you enter into life. Read on. He saith unto him, which Jesus, Yahweh Shai said, thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt do no murder. Where is that found? That's in the law. Mm -hmm. If you say the law is done away with, then it's okay to murder somebody. That's in the law. Go ahead. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Where's that found? That's in the law. Right? It's not just in the Ten Commandments. That's actually in the law. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not steal. That's in the law. You got to keep all these. So how is the law done away with? Go ahead. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not bear false witness, which is lying. That's all throughout the law. You can't do that. You can't pervert judgment. Perverting judgment is lying. That's all through the law. So you have to keep the laws. Go ahead. Honor thy father and thy mother. You have to honor your father and your mother. That's all throughout the law. Go ahead. And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Which is the moral and the civil law, which is, consists of many, many laws in the Old Testament. So in order to enter into life, you have to keep the commandments, man. You have to keep the law. So how then are you teaching that Paul was saying that you didn't have to keep the law? It makes no sense. Let's go to 2 Peter 3.17. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 17. This is the problem. We always go through the scripture and we have to continuously go through the scripture. Because Paul, you guys are bearing false witness on Paul. You breaking the commandment right there. When you teaching that Paul said that you don't have to keep the commandments, that is bearing false witness because Paul never taught such a thing. And I'm going to read this, that scripture out of Paul's own mouth where he says he never told anybody that they wasn't supposed to keep the law. We're going to read that in a minute. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, have written unto you. Come on. As also in all his episodes, mm -hmm. speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood. So Galatians 2.16 is hard to be understood by the average person that has no knowledge and has never been taught the Bible the right way. It's hard to understand what Paul means when he says no man is justified by the works of the law. Because Christ said you have to keep the law. How shot? He said you have to keep the law. So it's hard to understand what Paul was saying. So Christians, they say that means you ain't got to keep the law. Error. Go ahead. Which they that are unlearned. Because you unlearned. Read on. And unstable. And because you're unstable. Read on. Rest. You wrestle with that. You wrestle with the writings of Paul. You don't know how to reconcile the writings of Paul with the writings of Yahweh Shah, Jesus Christ. You don't know how to make it harmonize and make it make sense. Go ahead. As they do also the other scriptures. As you do the rest of the Bible. Because you guys don't just do that with the writings of Paul. You Christians do that with everything, man. You fumble and mumble all the Bible. Okay? Read on. Unto their own destruction. Unto your own destruction. All right? So now, let's get the book of Romans chapter 3, verse 31. Let's get a couple of quick precepts proven that Paul never told you that you don't have to keep the law. First one we're going to get is the book of Romans chapter 3, verse 31. Go ahead. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yeah, we established the law. Did you hear that? The Apostle Paul said, do we then make void the law through faith? The word void means of no value. So is the law no longer valuable because now we have faith now that Yahweh Shah came? God forbid. That means no. Yea, we establish the law. The law is still supposed to be established. It's still supposed to be kept. You're still supposed to teach your children and your wives and your nation to keep the commandments. But how? With faith in Yahweh Shah. Through faith in Yahweh Shah. And we're going to get to that in a moment. From there, let's go to the book of uh, Romans chapter 6. And verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? All right, so Paul is asking a question. What are we saying then? Shall we continue in sin? What is sin? Sin is transgression of the law. Okay? Should we then continue to transgress the law so that grace may abound? Read on. God forbid. That means no, man. So Paul wasn't teaching that you should transgress the law because we're under grace. That's not in the Bible. And when you read verses that you think are saying that, those verses are not saying that. The problem is with the reader. From there, 
Let's get the book of Acts 28, verse 17, and then we're going to go into our topic, which is Galatians 2 and 16. Let's get Acts 28, verse 17. Because again, you have the whole Christian world and many unlearned Israelites that are saying, Paul said that we ain't got to keep the law. Well, check this out. And it came to pass that after three days, Paul called the chief of the Jews together. Mm -hmm. And when they were come together, he said unto them, Men and brethren, though I have committed nothing against the people or customs of our fathers. Wait, 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 wait. Woo, that's you caught over some meat there. Read that again. Start from, start from the top. Verse 17. Read that again. And it came to pass that after three days, Paul called the chief of the Jews together. The chief of the Jews were like the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the other leaders. Read on. And when they were come together. And when the leaders of Israel were come together, they had made certain accusations against Paul. Read on. He said unto them. He told them, listen. Men and brethren. Though I have committed nothing against the people. So Paul said he never did anything to the people. Read on. Or customs of our fathers. Or what? Customs of our fathers. Paul said he never did anything against the customs of our fathers. What was the customs of our fathers? The law. Paul told the leaders, I never taught against the law. I never did anything against the law. Read on. Yet was I delivered prisoner from Jerusalem. Right. Yet was I delivered a prisoner from Jerusalem. Meaning Paul didn't transgress the laws. Paul didn't do anything against the customs that Israel had, which was the commandments, nor did he teach or do anything against what we were taught by our forefathers. That's a bold-faced lie and a false accusation that the leaders of Israel were railing and accusing Paul of. Just like you Christians today, you're doing the same thing. You accuse Paul of saying that we ain't got to keep the law, misunderstanding scriptures. But out right here in Acts 28 verse 17, Paul is clearly telling you he never transgressed against the customs of our fathers, nor anything the fathers taught. That's a lie. Bold face. In your face. Okay? Now, let's get the book of Galatians chapter 2 verse 16 again. And let's get down into our subject matter. Alright? Once again, like I said before, if you have a Bible at home, you should have your Bible out and you should be reading along with us. Alright? Go ahead. Uh, Galatians. No one Knowing that, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. Right, the Bible says a man is not justified by the works of the law. What does that mean when it says a man is not justified by the works of the law? What is that talking about? First of all, what are the works of the law? Is a man justified if he loves his brother? That's a work of the law. Yes. Is a man justified if he keeps the Sabbath? That's a work of the law. Yes. Is a man justified if he loves his mother and his father? That's in the law. Yes. Didn't we just read that in Matthew 19? Christ said, "Those are, if you will enter into life, you have to keep all those commandments. So a man is justified by all those works. So what does Paul mean when he says man is not justified by the works of the law? Hold what you got. Hold Galatians 2.16. Let's get the book of Acts chapter 13. And we're going to read verses 38 to 40. We're going to come right back. Acts chapter 13. Verse 38 to 40. This is going to explain what Galatians chapter 2, verse 16 is talking about. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, mm -hmm. that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. What man is Paul talking about? The man that Paul is talking about is Yahweh Shai. Through Yahweh Shai is preached the forgiveness of sins. Read on. And by him all that believe are justified from all things, from which ye cannot be justified by the law of Moses. Now that went right over a lot of your heads. A lot of your heads at home. That went right over your heads. That's the answer to Galatians 2.16. Let's read it again. Let's go nice and slow, and let's pull all the meat off the bone. Go ahead. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren. So we're trying to make it known unto the brothers and the sisters that think that Paul was teaching that we ain't got to keep the commandments. Read on. That through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. So through Christ is preached the forgiveness of sins. Read on. And by him all that believe are justified. Are what? Justified. Are what? Justified. Read on. From all things. We just read the word justified in Galatians 2.16 which said no man is justified by the works of the law. Through this man, Yahweh Shai, men are justified from what? Read on. From which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. So under Christ, we're justified from all things which we could not be justified under the law of Moses. What does that mean? Under the law of Moses, we have something called a sacrificial law, right? How are you justified to the Most High? 
you went out, if you committed a sin, and you got an animal sacrifice, and you made a sacrifice, and that animal was an atonement for whatever sin that you may have committed. That's how you were justified to the Most High. But there were certain sins that there was no animal sacrifice for. Let me give you some examples. If you were an idolater, going back to Deuteronomy the 13th chapter, there was no animal sacrifice for that. You were put to death. If you were an adulterer, there was no animal sacrifice for that. You were put to death. If you were an idolater, you were put to death. If you committed witchcraft, you were put to death. So there were certain sins where you could not be forgiven no matter what you did. But through Yahweh Shah, Jesus Christ, we have been able to be forgiven from all sins. We could not be justified from animal sacrifices by certain sins. When you read Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 64, one of the main sins the Most High prophesied through Moses that Israel would commit would be idolatry. Once again, when you read Deuteronomy 13, there's no repentance for idolatry, no animal sacrifice. So you were supposed to be put to death. So if you want to be technical, the whole nation of Israel was supposed to be put to death for having committed idolatry. There was nothing in the law that could save Israel as a nation from that punishment. But through Yahweh Shai, Jesus Christ, now we are justified or reconciled back to the Most High because Christ presented what? A greater sacrifice than the animal sacrifice. So when it says that no man is justified by the works of the law, that means that by sacrificing animals, Israel could never be justified back to the Most High. Because we committed sins where there was supposed to be no forgiveness for that. But when Yahweh died, now we've been able to be forgiven from everything. Read that again. Start from the top. And by him... Not, well, start from the top. Start from verse 38. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is our shy, read on, is preached unto you the forgiveness of you sins. So that's what we do. We preach the forgiveness of sins through Yahweh Shah. Because you have Israelites that don't believe in the New Testament. They don't believe in Yahweh Shah. But we preach forgiveness through Yahweh Shah. Why do we do that? Read on. And by him, all that believe are all that believe are justified from all things. That's where the faith comes in. For those of us that believe in Yahweh Shah. We are justified from all sins, meaning the sins that under the law of Moses, under the old covenant, there was no forgiveness for. That's what it means. Read on. From which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. Right. Now go back to Galatians 2 and 16 and read that again. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. That's what we just read in Acts 13, 38 through 40. What works of the law were we not justified by? The animal sacrifices under the law of Moses. The law of Moses couldn't save us from the sins that was pronounced that we was going to commit, and we did commit. Read on. But by the faith of Jesus Christ, Yahweh But by everybody that believes on Yahweh Shah, like we read in Acts, now we're able to be justified. Read on. Even we have believed in Yahweh Shah, that we might be justified by the faith of Yahweh Shah. Right, we're justified through Yahweh Shah, making a sacrifice that he made. Read on. And not by the works of the law. And not by the animal sacrifices that we had under Moses. This is saying the same thing that we read in Acts 13, 38 to 40, just in different words. But the problem, again, is with the reader. The majority of you Christians, you don't know the scriptures. So you read that and you get all bugged out. And if you didn't even know Acts 13, Yahweh shot Christ already told you that you have to keep the law. That should have been enough. Read on. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Right. By the animal sacrifices, no man can be justified because all Israel commits sin. Is it not written in the book of Romans that the Most High said he has, he has, he has uh, concluded all under sin? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God? All. So all Israel would commit sins where we were not supposed to be able to be forgiven for. See? All right? From there, let's go to the book of Romans chapter 3, verse 23. We're going to read verses 23 to 25. Let's get some more. Um, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's what I just quoted. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The whole nation. We just, I gave you a perfect example, Deuteronomy 28, 64. The whole nation of Israel committed idolatry at some point or another. Even those of us that are awake today, before we came into this truth, we committed idolatry. Whether it was in church, 
whether you was in a mosque, or whether you was following behind those false gods of Egypt, or whether you was a 5% of calling yourself God, all that is idolatry, man. If money was your God, that was idolatry too. If your woman was your God, that's idolatry too. Mm -hmm. If your job was your God, and that's what you worship, and you spent your whole life and all your time around and put your trust in, that's all idolatry. So all that's supposed to be put, to, you're supposed to be put to death for that. All have sinned. Read on. Being justified freely by His grace. Being justified freely by the grace through Yahweh Shai. Read on. Through the redemption that is in Christ Yahweh Shai. Right. We've been redeemed through Yahweh Shai, making that sacrifice. The same thing that we read in Acts 13. Go ahead. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood. Right. God, the Most High, sent Yahweh Shai to be a propitiation for us. What is a propitiation? That's another way of saying an offering. So the Most High sent Yahweh Shai down to be an offering for us with his blood. Why? Because the Most High requires a blood sacrifice for sin. Yet the animals could not cover us from all sins. So the Most High had to send Christ. That's how we're justified. Read on. To declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of Yahweh. Read on. To declare, I say, at this time his righteousness. That he might be just and the justifier of what? You read it fast. That he might be what? That he might be just. That Yahweh might be just. Read on. And the justifier of what is Yahweh The justifier. And Christ is the justifier. Do you understand what that means? When it says no man is justified by the works of the law, meaning an animal sacrifice, but Yahweh is the justifier because his sacrifice was able to justify us back to the Most High. See that? Read on. Of him which believeth in Yahweh. Right. From there, give me the book of Romans chapter 5. We're going to read verse 1 and we're going to jump down to verse 8. Therefore being justified by faith. Is that word justified again? It's all through the scriptures. Therefore being justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Christ Yahweh. That's the same thing we read in Acts 13 verse 38. It's the same thing we read in Galatians 2 16. We have peace with God through our Lord Yahweh Shai. How do we have peace with God through Yahweh Shai? Because Yahweh Shai became a peace offering. He offered himself up, as, himself up as a peace offering so that the Most High would accept us again. Because we read earlier that when we read the book of Lamentations, chapter 2, verse 5, the Lord said he was an enemy. So how did the Most High become peaceful with Israel again? Through Yahweh Shai, the sacrifice that he made. So Yahweh Shai became the justifier, and we are justified through the sacrifice he made, not through the works of the law, which is the animal sacrifice. That's all that this stuff means. Jump down to verse 8. Verse 8. But God Yahweh commended his love toward us. The Most High commended his love towards us. It's going to explain how. Read on. And that while we were yet sinners, Yahweh Shai died for us. While we were sinners, while we were outside the covenant, while we were enemies to the Most High, Yahweh Shai came down and died for us, the nation of Israel. Read on. Much more then, being now justified by his blood. Being now what? Justified by his blood. And now we're justified by Christ's blood, not by animal sacrifice. See how all these scriptures are pretty much saying all the same thing, just worded slightly differently? We're justified by his blood, not by the works of the law, which is the animal sacrifice. Go ahead. We shall be saved from wrath through him. We are saved from the wrath, which is destruction through the blood of Yahweh Shah. When we should have been destroyed. Go ahead. I'm, we're reading down to verse 10. Go ahead. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to Yahweh by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Right. We're reconciled and saved by the life of Yahweh Shah. From there, let's go to the book of 1 Corinthians, the sixth chapter. Now, this is a scripture that we always, we all read. But we're going to read down a little further. I'm going to show you something. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, start from verse 9, where we always, always start. This is where brothers always start. Go ahead. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of Yahweh? So, the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of the Most High. What is, what is the unrighteous? It's going to explain. Go ahead. Be not deceived. Don't be deceived. Go ne ahead. Neither fornicators. Fornicators cannot enter into the kingdom of the Most High. Read on. No idolaters. Idolaters, which was a sin punishable by death. They cannot enter into the kingdom of the Most High. Read on. 
No adulterers. No adulterers. And remember, Christ called the nation of Israel an adulterous generation. So technically speaking, we're not supposed to be able to enter into the kingdom of the Most High. Go ahead. No effeminate. No effeminate. Homosexuality. The act, the walk, the talk, everything. You're not supposed to be able to enter into the kingdom. Haven't committed that. And a lot of Israelites have committed that thing, man. Go ahead. No abusers of themselves with mankind. Same thing, read on. No thieves. Come on. No covetous. Mm -hmm. No drunkards. Mm -hmm. No revilers. No extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of your house. Read on. And such were some of you. And what? And such were some of you. So some of us mm. were guilty of idolatry. So we were not supposed to get the kingdom. Read on. But ye are washed. But ye are washed. Read on. But ye are sanctified. But ye are sanctified. Read on. But ye are justified. But ye are what? Justified. But ye are what? Justified. Read on. In the name of the Lord, Yahweh shot. Mm -hmm. And by the spirit of our power, Yahweh. So we've been justified by Christ, by Yahweh shot, by what he did, not by the animal sacrifice. That's all that these scriptures mean. That's all that Galatians 2.16 means. That's it. All right? From there, give me Galatians chapter 3. Uh, excuse me. Galatians chapter 5. We're going to read verses 3 through 5. Galatians chapter uh, 3, verse uh, 3 through, excuse me. Galatians chapter 5, verse 3 through 5. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised, that he is a debtor to do the whole law. So the circumcision is a sign of the covenant between us, the chosen, and the Most High. So once you become circumcised, that's a covenant, that's an agreement that you're making with the Most High, that you got to keep that whole law. That's what you're doing. It's just like when you sign on the paper and sign a contract with a so-called white man, he expects you to live up to that contract. Well, the Most High expected us to live up to our contract, which was all the commandments. Go ahead. Yahweh has become of no effect unto you. Right. Yahweh has become of no effect unto our people. Read on. Whosoever of you are justified by the law. Right. Whosoever of you are justified by the law. Is that talking about honoring our mother and our father? Is that talking about not being a homosexual? Is that no? Whosoever of you is justified by sacrificing animals, meaning that you try to you try to establish your righteousness to the Most High by sacrificing animals. Yahweh shines become of no effect to you. His sacrifice is of no effect to you. Read on. Ye are fallen from grace. Right, you're fallen from grace. Read on. For for we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Right, for we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith, which is through Yahweh Shah. Meaning that we know that we messed up before we came into this truth. We committed all types of sins. That we were worthy of death. Okay? But we have faith that even though we didn't go out and sacrifice a goat or a sheep or a dove, we have faith that the, the sacrifice that Yahweh Shah made was enough to cover us from that, from all those things. That the Most High is going to have mercy upon us even when He is not supposed to, that's supposed to. That's what the New Covenant is all about. Because when did Israel move from the Old Covenant to the New Covenant? Israel moved into the New Covenant when Yahweh Shah died. Because then there was no need to sacrifice animals anymore. There was no need for that. Because we could never be saved by that no way, man. We read that in the book of Amos, the fifth chapter. The Most High tells you that he didn't want our sacrifices anymore. Real quick, Amos 5. Most High didn't want our sacrifices anymore. The hell with our sacrifices. Because they were in vain, man. Israel would commit a sacrifice and then go right back out uh, and do the same thing all over again, man. All over again. I believe it's 5 and 21. I believe that's what it is, Amos. I hate, I despise the feast day. Yeah. Go ahead. Amos 5 and 21. Mm -hmm. I hate, I despise your feast days. Read on. And I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. Right, go ahead. Though ye offer me burnt offerings. Those are the sacrifices. Though ye offer me burnt offerings. Read on. And your meat offerings. And the meat offerings is what? The meat offerings were brought on the high holy days. The drink offerings were brought on the high holy days. And the priests also made sacrifices on the, on the high holy days. And they sacrificed, they made sacrifices for sin. Read on. I will not accept them. Most I said he wasn't accepting those things no more. So what was we supposed to do now? What were we supposed to do now? Most I said he don't accept them. Read on. Neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beasts. Right. The Most I said neither will he regard the peace offerings. What is the peace offerings? The sacrifices for sin. 
That makes peace between you and the Most High when you committed a sin and the Most High became an enemy to you. That peace offering went in your place. That blood was shed in your place. Well, the Most High said he wasn't regarding that no more. So what was we supposed to do? That's what it means in the New Testament where it says no man is justified by the works of the law. Meaning the Most High would not accept that stuff no more. So what was you supposed to do? That's why your hour shot had to come down and die. So that we could be justified through the sacrifice Yahweh made because we couldn't be through the ones that we was making. How hard is this? This is not hard. Give me James chapter 2. Again, I have to point this out again. If Yahweh Jesus Christ said in Matthew 5, 17, think not that I'm come to destroy the Lord of prophets. If any man shall Break the least of these commandments and teach men so the same shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Right? That's what our leader said. If you saying that Paul was teaching that you ain't got to keep the law, then Paul's going to be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. So these scriptures cannot mean that. Galatians 2.16 cannot mean that. That's why Proverbs 4.17 says, get wisdom with all you're getting, get what? Understanding. Understanding. The Bible must harmonize. It must make sense. And if you can't make it make sense, then you need to get with brothers at the most high put the spirit on that it can, can explain this stuff to you so that it can make sense. Okay? James chapter 2, uh, verse 20. Come. But without no obey man, that faith without works is dead. So faith without works is dead. You're talking about you have faith. But faith without works is dead. So how do you show the Most High that you have faith in Him? How, do you, how does one do that? You show the Most High you have faith in Him by doing what He said to do. How are you going to say you believe in the Lord but you're doing your own thing? That doesn't make any sense. You show the Lord you believe in Him by doing what He told you to do. Read on. Was not Abraham our father justified by works? Abraham our father was justified by works. What work specifically was Abraham justified by? Abraham was willing to make a blood sacrifice of his own son. He was willing to do that. Even though the Most High wasn't dealing with Ishmael, and he was just left with Isaac, and then the Most High asked him to sacrifice that son. It was a test. And Abraham was willing to do it and be obedient. See? So the Most High regards obedience more than he does sacrificing. But at the same time, Abraham was willing to do whatever it took to appease the Most High. The Most High gave us laws, statutes, and commandments to follow. If you have faith, the works you should be doing is the commandments that shows the Lord that you have faith. Go ahead. Was not Abraham our father justified by works? Abraham was justified by works. Read on. When he had offered Isaac, his son, upon the altar... Go ahead. Seest thou how faith wrought with his works? Right. And by works was faith made perfect. Go ahead. And the scripture was fulfilled with saith, Abraham believed Yahweh, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. That's why the scriptures speak about us having faith through Yahweh Shah. That's why we always mention having faith through Yahweh Shah. Abraham believed the Most High, and it was imputed to him for righteousness, man. Because we cannot keep the law perfectly. We understand that. In this captivity, we can't keep the, law, the laws perfectly. We just read a scripture earlier in the book of Psalms, chapter 137, verse 4, where it says, How can you sing the Lord's song in a strange land? What's the Lord's song? The Bible. Doesn't the Bible say that we're supposed to not have nothing with pork in it? The white man puts pork in everything. Doesn't the Bible command us that we're not supposed to be next to a woman when she's on a cycle? We have to live with our woman when they're on a cycle, unless you can afford to have two apartments. I'm just giving you little small technical laws. It's impossible to keep the law perfectly. But we keep the laws to the best of our ability so that like our father Abraham, our obedience to the Most High can be imputed to us through righteousness, through faith in Yahweh Shah. Read on. And he was called the friend of God. And he was called the friend of God. Read on. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified. Read. But we just read in Galatians 2.16 <laughs> that no man is justified by the, by, by the works of the law. But now James is saying, we see what? Read again. We see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Right. So when the sacrifice that Jehovah Shah made took us away from having to be punished for the sins that we had committed against the Most High. So now having a clean slate, having been forgiven through the sacrifice Jehovah Shah made, 
Now, we have to keep the commandments to the best of our ability and try not to mess up. But if we do mess up, we don't have to go out and sacrifice a, a goat or a lamb or, 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 or a bullock or a dove or what have you. We don't have to go out and do that because Yahweh Shah already made that sacrifice. Because we can never be justified to the most high by those things anyway. That's all that this stuff means, okay? Give me the book of Revelation chapter 14. Can I read just verse 26? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead yeah, also. That's plain. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. What are you proving to the Most High when you're saying you have faith in the Most High and ain't keeping commandment number one? What are you proving? See? It's just like if you have a, if you if you're a parent and you have children and you give your children instructions and your children do the complete opposite of what you say, how are your children showing you that they respect you? How are your children showing you that they love you? Or they honor you as their parents if every time you tell them to do A, they do B? How are you showing the Most High that you love the Most High if you're doing your own thing? That's what this is all saying. All right? You got something you want to add? No. Revelations 14 and 12. Let's go to the end of the book. The very end of the Bible, which is the book of Revelation, we're going to read verse 14 and 12. Read that. Here is the patience of the saints. Here's the patience of the saints. What saints is this talking about? The elect, 144,000. If you want to know how I know that, start from the first verse. But we're just going to read this point. Go ahead. Here are they that keep the commandments. The 144,000 are going to be people that are keeping the commandments. So if Paul was telling you that you ain't have to keep the commandments, or so you think, and that's what you're doing, you're not going to be part of the elect. I'm not saying that. This is what we're reading. Here are they that keep the commandments. Read on. Of Yahweh uh -huh. and the faith of Yahweh Shah. And the faith. And the faith. They keep the commandments, but they're not going out and sacrificing animals because they know that they can never be justified to the Most High through that. So they keep the commandments to the best of their ability, and they have faith that just like Abraham, the Most High will impute those good works of the commandments as righteousness to them and deliver them. That's all this stuff means. Last scripture. Um, 1 Samuel 15. They got a pre -serve? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, pre -serve. Absolutely. This is the book of uh, Acts, chapter 15, mm -hmm. verse 1. Mm -hmm. And certain men which came down from Judea uh -huh. taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles, and elders about this question. Right, so even after um, the law, the manner of Moses is what? The laws and commandments. Even circumcision. Circumcision spiritually and circumcision in the flesh. So not only do we need the works with the faith, but you are not justified by faith alone. You also need the works. You need to be circumcised spiritually by keeping the laws. Right, right, right. Exactly. All right. Now, let's go to the book of 1 Samuel 15, verse 21 to 23. All right. Now, let me just expound on that scripture that the brother, while it's on my mind, let me expound on the scripture that the brother just brought out a little further. When it says, except a man be circumcised after the law of Moses, he cannot be saved. This is the same problem that was going on with the sacrifice. Same thing. The, the same man who was teaching Israel if they didn't sacrifice, they couldn't be, they, they weren't right. If they wasn't circumcised, they wasn't right. This is not to say that a blood sacrifice wasn't needed. As we keep repeating over and over like a broken record, there was blood needed. Yahweh Shah shed that blood. There had to be blood. The circumcision is something that is supposed to go down. It's supposed to happen. So coming into this truth and reading Acts 15 and 1 is not saying that you don't need to be circumcised. That's not what that's saying. What it's saying is, is that the exterior things of doing the law, like the Pharisees were doing when they would call themselves doing the law, and you don't have that faith in your house shot, right? You cannot be delivered, period. Because a man can be circumcised, right? And he can still be a thief. He can still be an adulterer. He can still be a murderer. He can still be a liar. He can still be an idolater. And he can still be circumcised all at the same time. So you have to have the faith in your house shot. What the Pharisees were doing was they were strictly pushing Moses and trying to push your house shot to the side. 
That was the disputation mm -hmm. that was going on between Paul and the Pharisees. They were just Moses, 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 Moses. Moses couldn't save us. He couldn't save us. That's what that's about. But a lot of people misunderstand that scripture. That was something I was going to go into the future, but the brother brought it out. All right. Now, read what you got. Acts, uh, 1 Samuel 15, verse 21 to 23. But the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed. Right, because when you read the story, just so we can get to the point, I just went to these verses. The Mosai, through Samuel, had told Saul that the Amalekites, they were supposed to destroy everything and not take nothing. They wasn't supposed to take anything. So what did the Saul and his men do? They took stuff anyway. Took stuff anyway after they were told by the man of the Lord not to do it. Go ahead. Should, um, which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. Right, so he said, Saul decided, you know what, the Lord told me to destroy all these, um, these, these uh, cattle, but I'm going to take some cattle and I'm going to sacrifice it to the Lord. If the Lord told you to destroy it, why would you, take, why would you think the Lord would honor a sacrifice of the animals, the very animals that he told you to kill? Crazy. Go ahead. And Samuel said, had the Lord as great delight in burnt offering and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? So people try to supersede being obedient to the Most High with the works of the law. Meaning that they try to be technical about the law. Like I said, they want you to be sacrificing animals, sacrificing animals, sacrificing animals, sacrificing animals. That's why the Most High said he wasn't dealing with that. Because that's where Israel's focus was. Their focus wasn't on being obedient to the Most High. Their focus was, well, if I mess up, I could just go sacrifice that. So that became worthless to the Most High. See? So have the Most High any delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices? Go ahead. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. Right. To obey the Most High is better than sacrifice. Go ahead. And to hearken than the fat of rams. And to hearken to the Most High is better than than the fat of friends. And you can sacrifice a million animals. It's better to be obedient. And when you're being obedient, you automatically keep the most high's commandments. Automatically. See? So you won't have to worry about having to sacrifice nothing because you'll be doing the commandments. Go ahead. Verse 23. Uh, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. The Bible says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. What was the punishment for witchcraft? Death. Death. To be rebellious was, this was tantamount to witchcraft. That's like being a witch. The most high looks at it on the same level as being a witch. Go ahead. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. And being stubborn and resisting what the most high tells you to do is the same as idolatry, which is another sin that was punishable by death. So the most high wants us to be obedient. So that's what we've been called to do in this truth right now, is to be obedient. But what are you going to be obedient to if you ain't keeping the law? What are you obedient to? You, then you ain't doing nothing. See? So I hope you brothers and sisters got something from this. And I hope you brothers and sisters understand what Galatians 2.16 is talking about. And scriptures just like it. Romans, the third chapter, is another scripture, another chapter that's very similar to Galatians 2. Where it speaks about the law being a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. All these things are talking about what Israel had to do to atone for their sins and how those things couldn't help us. That's all it's talking about. So we have to have faith in Yahweh Shah. If you're an Israelite and you don't believe in Yahweh Shah or an Egyptologist or any, anything else, then you have no covering. Your sins have not been forgiven, man. Mm -hmm. And therefore, on the day of judgment, you're going to die. You're going to die. All right? So... It behooves you to repent and come back to this Bible, all right? So with that, I'm going to say peace and blessings to the nation of Israel, to the Most High's elect, because only the elect are going to understand the scriptures anyway. When we're speaking, we're fishing for the Lord's elect. We know that the whole nation is not going to get it pursuant to many, many scriptures. So with that, we say peace and safety to the Most High's nation of Israel, the elect, and to America. The sooner America falls, the better. We say shalom. Shalom.